by an additional 24 months, and decision that was endorsed by the Vatrice Transition Government National Unity, Aratigno, Council of Ministers, and consented to by the RGMEC. <coughs> it was then ratified by the Transition National Legislature, and from there assented to by the President of the Republic of South Sudan, His Excellency Savakir Mayadit. The extended transition period is therefore effective from 22nd February 2025 to 22nd February 2027 with elections due in December 2026. This is a tight timeline which requires deliberate planning and a sense of urgency in order to have all the critical pending tasks accomplished for the elections to take place as scheduled. As you are all aware, the decision for the extension was met with mixed reactions, with many being disappointed at what felt like the continuation of an endless cycle of transitions, the slow pace of implementation and inability to adhere to timelines by the Arctic view are a major source of concern. Consequently, due to the non-completion of the critical preparatory tasks of the agreement required for elections, it was clear that the country was not ready for elections as previously scheduled in December 2024. Throughout implementation of the Libertarian Peace Agreement, progress has been slow because of the recurring challenges such as the insufficient political will, trust deficit, lack of sufficient dedicated and predictable funding, and capacity gaps. Therefore, there is an unprecedented need to do things differently this time around. A clear demonstration by the Artigenu to mobilize sufficient resources to implement the agreement will be a strong indication of political will and commitment. As the representative of the Artigenu told us at the extraordinary plenary, I quote, the bulk of funding must be internally generated, unquote. It is our expectation that this funding will be availed immediately. It is therefore expected that the Arctic New and the various institutions and mechanisms of the agreement will brief this meeting about their strategies to align them and deliver their tasks within extended transition period. This should include action plans, budget, timelines, and resource mobilization and proactive engagements with the various other agreement institutions and mechanisms. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in terms of the status of the implementation of the RACRIS, I will highlight some of the recent developments since our last meeting and then conclude with recommendations. Firstly, governance. It is understood that political parties council, the National Election Commission, the National Policy Review Commission and the National Bureau of Statistics have each provided a timeline and accompanying budget to the Arctic Union covering the extended transition period. It is expected that the Arctic Union will fund these institutions accordingly. In RJ Mex's view, that enhanced cooperation between these institutions can better align their respective work plans and priorities. It is expected that they will provide more details on their work plans in this meeting. With regard to judicial reforms, RJMEC welcomes the validation of the final report of the Annual Judicial Reforms Committee, JRC, which nears completion of its mandate, as provided for under Article 1.17 of the Arachis. A reformed, effective, independent, and impartial judiciary in South Sudan will be an anchor of justice, liberty, and the rule of law before, during, and after elections and for the future generations. It is now incumbent on the Arctigenu to adapt this report and to effectively and expeditiously implement the recommended reforms. As demonstrated by both the National Constitutional Amendment Committee, NCAC, and JRC, with financial and other support, agreement institutions and mechanisms can deliver their mandates successfully. In terms of women representation in the executive and legislative appointments, 
RJ Bank would like to emphasize the importance of a minimum 35% threshold for their representation. Further, it is important to remind the parties that when replacements in this appointment take place, they should not reduce the overall count of women in their possession, in their positions. Instead, women representation should be increased in executive and legislative appointments, as was underscored at the recent fourth annual national conference on women peace and security, women's leadership and full inclusion in peace building and political processes is central to achieving lasting peace and security in South Sudan. The inclusion in leadership will be boosted by the prioritization of the impending bills of anti-gender-based violence, GBV, women empowerment, the Women Enterprise Development Fund, persons with disability and family laws, among others. In regard to transition justice, in regard to transition security arrangements, the permanent ceasefire continues to hold. However, there have been several alarming incidents of violence in Nasir County, Upper Nile State, that have claimed several lives and displaced thousands of families. The incident in Onduruba and the Jabal, Iraq, in central Equatorial State involved gruesome killings of approximately 26 youth, allegedly by uniformed personnel. I have been informed that a committee has been appointed to investigate the incident in a third country and in central Equatorial State. I would like to, learn, to hear more from the JDB on this matter. Furthermore, I call, upon, I call upon System VM to expeditiously investigate this instance. Those found responsible should be held accountable. On the transition security arrangements, no progress has been reported since the last panel. The challenges that have long existed still persist, including lack of funding for security mechanisms and their activities, poor logistic support to training centers and cantonment sites, and lack of funding for DDR Commission. The DDR Commission, established as per Article 1.19.1.20 of the Iraqis, and being one of the most important commissions critical for the stabilization of the country, reports that it has not been funded by the government since its reconstitution. There are reports that NTC has been working on a consolidated work plans for security mechanisms. This meeting expects to hear more on this from the NTC. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, on humanitarian affairs, there are growing humanitarian needs in South Sudan, considering the influx of refugees and IDPs due to the conflicts in Sudan and the natural calamities like floods and increased food shortages. It was therefore welcome news to hear that South Sudan Action Plan on Return, Reintegration and Recovery was recently launched by the Vice President, Her Excellency Rebecca Nyadeng. The national policy aims at providing durable solutions for refugees, NDPs, returnees, and host communities. It is expected that the policy will help answer critical questions for how IDPs and refugees will be settled and participate in the concern making and electoral processes. On resource economic and financial management, the regulations which govern the public procurement and disposal of assets authority and the Bank of South Sudan's statutory functions have recently been developed following the passing of key legislation in 2023. In particular, efforts in strengthening the financial system through reforms to the Bank of South Sudan help to promote financial stability by regulating bylaws all financial institutions. I therefore urge the Bank of South Sudan to continue exercising its statutory functions, especially in relation to promoting price stability and monetary policy formulation as per Article 4.2.2.2 of the Arab 
the submission of the draft national budget for fiscal year 2024-2025 to the TNLA on 22nd, 25th of September 2024 is three months behind budget preparation schedule, with funding being a key part of the requirements for the extended transition period. It is important that budget aligns with peace implementation needs in a timely manner. <coughs> RJ make RNGs its finalization as soon as possible. Furthermore, with the reported resumption oil flowing through the pipeline that runs through Sudan, this should likewise provide budgetary support to peace implementation. More broadly, with the economic hardships currently being experienced in the country, RGMA calls for the establishment of the Enterprise Development Fund, the Youth Enterprise Development Fund, and the Women Enterprise Development Fund. On transition justice, it is noted that the bills of the Commission for Truth, Reconciliation and Healing, CTRH, and the Compensation Reparation Authority, CRA, were passed by the Transition National Legislative Assembly in September and therefore submitted to the Council of States for scrutiny. The bills have now been submitted to the President for assent. Given the critical importance of these bills in enabling the establishment of the mechanisms that use be ahead goals for truth, reconciliation, justice, reparation, and healing, RJMEC urges the Artigny to conclude enactment of the bills and to prioritize the establishment and operationalization of the CTRH and CRA. In terms of the permanent constitution making process, RJMEC understands that the reconstituted National Constitution Review Commission has taken steps to ensure its institutional readiness for the delivery of its market. In this regard, RGMA takes note that 10 members of the NCRC are awaiting formal appointments and swearing in and appeals to Artigny to expedite this process. Furthermore, the NCRC has developed its action plan with a budget and timeline and requires funding from the Artigny continue civic education and public consultation. RGMEC further appeals to Artigenu to avail the requisite resources and support the NCRC to enable it to conduct its activities in a timely manner, given that the permanent constitution is a critical prerequisite for the holding of elections. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, for its part, RGMEC has enhanced its diplomatic engagements since the last plenary, including having met various interlocutors such as the first vice president, the vice presidents, different national ministers of the Tigni, agreement institutions and mechanisms, regional guarantors, AUC5 ambassadors, and international partners based in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and in Nairobi, Kenya. These engagements have provided updates on the implementation of the RACRIS and sought to have an deliberate and aligned approach focused on enhanced support for the South Sudan peace process. Given the aforementioned, and in light of the need to think, in the light of the need to do things differently in order to adhere to agreed timelines and implementation schedule as per the extended period, I would like to offer the following recommendations to our team. A. Provide a strategy with a clear, coherent, and overarching action plan, budget, and timeline for the implementation of priority tasks for the extended transition period to build confidence and aid resource mobilization and support. B. Coordinate the agreement institutions and mechanisms so that their work plans are aligned, coherent, and cooperative to ensure effective and efficient implementation. C. Mobilize and dedicate adequate and predictable funding to the agreement institutions and mechanisms now and throughout the extended transition period. D. Enhance the effectiveness of government trilateral task force 
to help identify areas of collaboration and support to address issues related to the constitution making and electoral processes in a timely manner. E. Increase women's representation in executive and legislative appointments up to and beyond the 35% minimum threshold, given the centrality of the roles of women in achieving lasting peace and security in South Sudan. F. Expedite the completion of the unification of forces and their deployment and DDR. G. Address questions of how South Sudanese refugees and IDPs will participate in the constitution making and electoral processes. And H. Complete enactment of the CTRH and CRI bills, paving the way for the establishment and operationalization of these critical justice mechanisms. In conclusion, Your Excellencies, I urge the parties to replicate the spirit of collegiality, consensus, and, and, and urgency that was expected in extending the transition period to expeditiously implement the critical planning tasks within the extended period, especially the consumer making and the electoral processes and the unification forces. Furthermore, it is important to observe that South Sudan has friends and partners who are willing to support the implementation of the Revitalized Peace Agreement, provided the Artigini will lead the process by providing the bulk of the funding, securing predictable funding and making early progress with the implementation of these outstanding tasks, we will therefore send a positive signal across the country that the parties are making good on their promises and would attract timely support. I therefore appeal to Artigini make significant step in implementing in the implementation of the agreement in these remaining months for the end as a Christmas gift to the people of South Sudan. I wish you food food and gracious. I thank you. Thank you.